Hi, everyone. Thank you to the organizer for the opportunity to present my postdoctoral work today. And I would like to try to convince you about the key role of mesoderma fibronectin in cardiovascular development. So first of all, the heart is formed by two uh, progenitor cell lines, the first and second heart fields. And it's known that this early in the development form this structure, where the first heart fields is here, in forming the cardiac crescent in pink, and the second heart field is right behind, here in blue. And after the development, these progenitor cell lines give rise to different parts of the heart. For example, the first heart field give rise to the left ventricle and part of the atrium, while the second heart field give rise to the right ventricle, part of the atrium, and the alpha tract. And during my postdoctoral work, I have been interested in how the alpha tract elongate because the alpha tract gives rise to the two principal puzzles that are going to connect the embryo with the root of the heart. That is the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. And interestingly, 30% of the congenital heart diseases come from the dysregulated formation of the cardiac alpha tract. So when I arrived to the lab, they was trying to elucidate the role of fibronectin in heart development, that is an extracellular matrix protein secreted outside to the, to the cells, because they found that the global depletion of fibronectin resulted in severe heart defects, including short alpha drug phenotype, as you can see here in this picture, and embryonic lethality at early in the development at E9 and a half. So because these embryos have also multiple defects, my role was trying to dissect the role of fibronectin specifically in heart development. And for that, I used conditional knockouts for deplete fibronectin in the mesoderm, because fibronectin is highly expressed this tissue. So I use the MS1 Cree lineage to generate control embryos in which fibronectin is only depleted in one allele, and mutant embryos in which fibronectin was depleted in both alleles and in all the mesodermal derived cells, including the second heart fields. So the first that I did was uh, obtain embryos in different stage and surface the structure of the different structure of the heart. So here in yellow, you can see that this is alpha track in Turkey, you can see the proximal alpha tract, and in pink, you can see the left ventricle. And if you compare mute control and mutant, you can see that in mutant, the alpha tract is shorter. But interestingly, this uh, shortening in the alpha tract is only occurred in a nine and a half, because when we look at early in the development, one day early, the alpha tract is similar between control and mutant. So for trying to understand, what is going on, you need to know a little bit more about the epithelial properties of, of the second heart field cells. Because as I mentioned before, these cells contribute to the alpha tract elongation. So the second heart field are localized here in the dorsal pericardial wall and connect with the alpha tract, then with the right ventricle and the left ventricle. And if you look at a ventral view in, in the mice embryo, you can see that the second heart field form a monolayer of epithelial cells, and it is known that the cell cell addition and the epithelial forces are necessary for these cells to migrate into the alpha tract. Also, because it's an epithelium, they have a basolateral polarity, apical and basolateral polarity, so they can express different markers. For example, they express the epicacy in the apical membrane and scrabble in the basolateral membrane. So, Another interesting property of the second heart field is that they have different subdomains. They have an anterior and posterior second heart field. They're going to express different genes and give rise to different parts of the heart. So how the second heart field migrate into the alpha tract until now is known that there exist two forces that are going to help these cells to migrate. One is are the pushing force that are given for the uh, second heart field cells in the posterior that through intercalations going to push the cells in the anterior second heart fields into the alpha tract. And also you have the pulling forces that was uh, generated by the cell cell addition that has been mentioned before that are needed for the migration of these cells. And all this process occur between eight and a half and around 10 and a half. And if you remember, my mutant embryos show effects in the alpha tract elongations in the middle of this process, around nine and a half. So we hypothesize that this could be due because the second heart field cells migration in, in, into the alpha tract was effective. And this could be due for change in cell shape and mechanical transduction or cells uh, differences in the cell polarity or cell, cell addition. So for that's the first idea, I use imaries software to surface the 
cells in the anterior and posterior uh, DPW of second heart field. And I, sh I found that in the control embryos, these cells are more elongated than in mutants. In mutants, you can see that are more circular. And also the epithelium is much more disorganized in the mutants. They form multiple layer instead of the monolayer in control cell, in control embryos. And interestingly, this occurred before the, the defect that we found in the alpha drug elongation at the eight and a half. And also only occur in the anterior DPW. In the posterior, the cells are normal. So then we went to take a look to the actocytoskeleton to try to explain these phenotypes. And we found that in transversal section, you can see the uh, second half field cells here in the bottom. The uh, filament of actin is more elongated than in, con in mutants. They are more larger and also uh, is more disorganized. Does this corroborate or this epithelial defect in the second heart field? And also, again, only occur in the anterior DPW. So for trying to elucidate which signaling pathway could be altered by these changes, we test EPO pathway because EPO pathway can sense change in the ectoseromatic stiffness and also in the uh, myosin cytoskeleton. And under the activation of mechanical signaling, this EPO pathway go to off and the gap can translocate to the nucleus and translate different genes that are involved in proliferation and also in tissues growth. So here I don't show this data, but at early at the eight and a half, gap is, on, is mostly cytosolic in the DBW, but here I show that, that at nine and a half, gap is translocated into the nucleus in the DBW in controls, however in mutant, is mostly cytosolic, it's more diffuse. So this uh, suggests that the absin and pathway is unregulated. So for a corroborative, we test different direct target of YAP, like CTGF and C61. And here I can, you can see CTGF that is nightly expressing control in the anterior DPW, but in mutant, the, the, this the decrease, the signal decrease, suggesting that the absin and pathway is unregulated. So in summary of this part, we found that early in the development, we found a defect in cell shape and also in actin cytoskeleton that this uh, later in the development generate a gap signaling pathway down regulation. So then we test if the second half cells have defect in cell polarity and cell cell addition. Uh, for that, we use two apical markers. We have here podocalyxin and epicacy that early at eight and a half, the in control are localizing the apical membrane of the second heart field. But in mutant, they lost the polarity and it's also localized in the vasolateral membrane. Then we test NK daring, that is a cell cell addition marker. And early in the development at eight and a half, we found uh, that uh, it's normal in between control and mutant is similar, but at nine and a half, in control is localized nicely in the anterior DPW but they lost the, the social additions in mutants. So in summary, we found that early in the development, we have this change in cell shape and polarity. And then early in the development, this generates a loss of the cell cell addition. So the next question was, does mesoderma fibronectin is required in a cell autonomous manner? Because if you look closer in control, you can see that in the middle of the endoderm and the DPW, both tissues secrete fibronectin. So you can see, you can have here fibronectin that came from the mesoderm that is in blue and fibronectin that came from the endoderm that is in pink. But in our mutant, we only have fibronectin that came from the endoderm because we deplete fibronectin from the second heart field. So why this fibronectin cannot replace the mesoderma fibronectin? So we'll try to answer that. First, we we'll take a look to the fibronectin expression in the middle of these two tissues. And interestingly, we found that in the anterior DPW, the level of fibronectin is similar between control and mutant, suggesting that the endoderm is trying to compensate a separate and secretate more fibronectin for compensating the loss of mesoderma fibronectin. But it also, we found that the exists a gradient of the expression of fibronectin and that is more in the anterior DPW uh, than in posterior. And this can explain why it, we found more defects in the anterior second heart field 
and probably fibronectin is needed in the anterior DPW for maintain the stiffness and allow the cells to migrate into the alpha drug. So for Triton, let's see if this um, mesoderma uh, fibronectin have a cell autonomous role. We use the SOC17 pre lineage to deplete fibronectin in the endoderm. So we, in this RNA scope, you can see that we deplete fibronectin from the endoderm and we uh, have less fibronectin protein between these two tissues. And we went to take a look to Enegadarin. But here uh, we found that in control and mutant, they have similar expression of Enegadarin in the second heart field. So that suggests that at least the maintention of the cell cell addition is a role that uh, specifically from uh, the mesoderma fibrin. So, in conclusion, we found that mesoderma fibronectin is required for alpha tract elongation. That we found uh, that exists a gradient of fibronectin that is more fibronectin in the anterior second heart field than in posterior, and that is required for maintaining the peterial architecture, cell shape, and polarity, atomiosis in the skeleton, gap signaling, and cell cell addition. And then with my future question that I would like to answer in, in if I have a lab is which could be the mechanism. Because fibronectin is known that is preferentially assembly by cell that is producing it, that is known also that autotin fibronectin regulates cell shape, cell cell adjunction, and in endothelial cells. And also exists another protein, extracellular matrix protein, that is senescin C that promote fibronectin synthesis and also promote uh, endothelial cell cell addition, cell polarity, and vasoformation. And it's known that in absence of autocrine fibronectin, the nascent lead to surrounding and decrease of cell cell addition. So we think that maybe there exists a um, loss of the metastasis of the nascent C, and this can explain the phenotype of the loss of the epithelial properties in the second heart field. So we went to take a look to the nasin in, in this tissue, and we found that in control, the nasin is expressed similarly to fibronectin. But in mutant embryos, you can see here that the nasin is uh, lost its expression, normal expression, and is localized uh, in the middle of the second half of cells too. So this can explain maybe that the cells can make more round, more circular, and they lost its epithelial properties. Uh, my hypothesis is that they need the fibronectin is needed in cell autonomous manner because probably need to be secreted in together to alpha five integrin and preactivate these receptors in order to be assembled or facilitate the assembly of fibronectin. But in the mutants, probably we have because we have a, a depletion of the expression of fibronectin. Alpha, integrin alpha 5 beta 1 go to the membrane, but in an active form, and the nasin can bind to another receptor, and this can lose the epithelial properties. So I would like to say thank you to Astros Lab and all the financial support. And also, if you want to contact me, this here you have my email and my Twitter. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Lovely talk. Um... We do have time for questions, so please use the Q&A box if you do have a question. Um, I'll start off by asking. Um, so it's interesting that the endodermal cells upregulate fibronectin expression to compensate for the loss of fibronectin in the mesoderm. Do you have an idea of how they're sensing the extracellular matrix and the sort of mechanism that leads to that overproduction? Well, because we saw this, um, uh, it's supposed that endoderm is not expressing tenacin C. So probably because we have this loss of the localization of tenacin C, maybe this can uh, do like do a signal to the endoderm to secrete more fibronectin. Okay. So that just could be one idea that we can test. Um, my second question is about the role of um, neural, cardiac neural crest and whether that's involved in outflow tract remodeling or not. Well, we we test if the neural crest cells migrate into the alpha tract because it's known that also they contribute, but mm -hmm. the migration of the uh, neural crest cells was fine. It's not differences between control and mutant. Mm -hmm. So probably that's why we focus in the second half field. Okay, thank you. We have a question from the audience. So Paul Palmkiss Gomez asks, uh, well, says nice talk, and then asks two questions. Um, first, when you quantify the length of the outflow tract, 
Where's the right ventricle in your E point, E9.5 embryos? Is the defect exclusive for the outflow tract or is it also affecting the right ventricle? Uh, we It's just specifically in the alpha tract, yeah. And the second is... The second question is, the result showing disorganized tenosin may explain the disorganization of the epithelial proteins in the cell membrane, like enkaderin. How do you explain the absence of enkaderin expression? Well, we found that in the beginning, at the eight and a half, we lost the cell's uh, shape and polarity. And at, at this time, any gathering was fine. Mm -hmm. So probably later in the development, because they lost these shapes, the any gathering is, cell cell addition is lost, but later in the development. It's not like the expression of any gathering decrease. It's not probably, it's because the cell shape changed that they love the, the cell cell addition. Okay, uh, I'll finish with one last question in case there's anyone lingering. Um, so I might have missed this, but do you think that fibronectin is being used as a substrate for the for the mesodermal cells to climb up? Um, so if you get rid of all the fibronectin, for example, you wouldn't see any outflow tracts because none of the cells can migrate. Yeah, I mean, I think that Mesoderma fibronectin specifically it have this role because mm -hmm. if you have to see and when we deplete endoderma fibronectin, the alpha drug elongation actually is fine. We measured that. So probably is an auto is a serotonomous role of mesoderma okay. fibronectin.